Hey guys, we got a piece of heavy wall mechanical tubing right here uh, from the welding shop that has caused a little bit of problem for uh, Joe and the guys over there that were trying to cut it. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd problem and I'm going to see if I can um, hope, well actually I don't want to replicate the problem, but I'm going to give it a shot and see if, it, if it's going to give me a problem. And the problem is, is that it's tearing up the bandsaw blades over on a saw. Now he was able to get one of these, he got one of the pieces cut and it did fine. They came in for a second cut, which you can see right here. And when it got down to that point, it, uh, the, the blade tore itself up, you know, chewed the teeth off. So he went ahead and uh, swapped the blade and tried to cut it again and said that this cut right here was a brand new blade that he put on the saw. Messed the blade up. All right, so he said they swapped the blade out again and it messed the blade up a second time, actually third time, honestly. Uh, yeah, it'd be a third time because it tore up here, then he got it there and he got it there and they tried to rotate it. You can see there's a cut there. I don't know what's going on with this. Joe thinks that this piece is hard. So I need to see if I can get it cut and see if I run into the same issue. I've never run into a piece of standard tubing like this that's hard, not even like hard spots. And I'm not saying that it's not possible because it very well could be. So if that's the case, we might be running into a, you know, a piece of lemon steel right here. This is, uh, let me see, six and a half OD. I think it's three and a half ID, something like that. It might be four inch. It might be considered four inch so you can clean it up and then six and a half OD so you could clean it up. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get it cut and uh, see if it does the same thing to me. All right, so what I have done, I went ahead and swapped out my bandsaw blade over on my hide mech saw. And by the way, Joe's got hide mech saw as well. He's used it for years. He's never given a problem, so I don't know what the, what the deal is. All right, so here's my old bandsaw blade. It's been needing to be changed anyway because this blade is actually dull and I have a couple of really worn spots. Where I was trying to cut a piece of chrome rod that ended up being induction hardened, I didn't catch it in time and it was rubbing the teeth. So this is an old wore out blade anyway. So it was time to swap it out. So this gave me a really good excuse to go ahead and put one of our new MK Morse blades on here. And what I went with, I got a couple of these guys. It's their M Factor carbide tipped blade. All right, so these blades right here have carbide tips on it, which should work really well for cutting through material like this, you know, especially stainless and, you know, alloy steels and things like that. So I've already got the blade swapped out. This is a, a backup right here. So we're gonna go over there to the hide mech and see if I can get this cut. And I'm not gonna follow the same groove. We're just gonna line it up. We'll line it up next to it and see if I can get a nice straight cut in there. And if, and if it works out for me, then we'll go to the lathe and just face that off. So uh, ultimately what Joe is trying to make, what he needs is some more of those weld in, um, weld in pin bosses. That's what he's making right here. So we have a 90 millimeter pin that goes through it. OD is not critical, just needs to be cleaned up. And the thickness that he was shooting for was two and one eighth, but even that is not super critical either. So he needs three of them because he's already got one of them done. And then this happened on the second one where it tore his uh, bandsaw blade up and then a second and a third. So it's really weird to me that that would happen. Because like I said, I've never seen a piece of this kind of material that's hardened or has hard spots in it. So let's go over to the hide mech and see if we can get this cut. Let's see what kind of adventure we can get into today. Okay, we got the tube set up in my hide mech. I have the uh, DM1215. Got our fresh brand new carbide tip blade on there. Let's see if we can get her cut. All right, just double checking here. I've got it set to uh, two and a quarter just over that. And that's past that spot that they had tried to cut right there. So let's go for it, shall we?
A lot of coolant splash there. Like there's a piece of trash in that orifice where that coolant's coming out. So far, it's cutting it. Man, I had to go get my earplugs in. That's a squeaky sounding blade. It was a little bit squeaky, but the blade did just fine for me. It's actually got a nice smooth feel to it. I have not used carbide tip blades very much. We've run them a couple times in the past for a couple of special applications, but other than that, we've always just used a bimetal blade, you know, non-carbide tip, just a carbon steel blade. But that seemed to work pretty good right there. All right, we'll go ahead and move it down and see if we can get another one cut out of that. All right, one more set over, two and a quarter inches tightened up. We are ready to cut. All right, another successful cut. No problems on my end right here. Now I know I've got an advantage here using the carbide tip blade, but I wanted to be sure that I could get through these things and not tear my, one of my blades up. So, so far so good. So I do need to cut this last one. We're just gonna move this down a little bit and uh, cut outside of the, uh, the bandsaw cut that they tried to make and just eliminate some of this material right there and then we'll just try to face it off in the lathe. All right, we've got that last piece kind of set in there using the, uh, you can see the laser light, I believe. We're off to the right side of that old cut. I don't want to get into that. And then we'll just use some uh, insert tools to face all that off. Should be good to go. Turn the lamp back on and we'll see if we can cut this last one. Looks like another good cut. Our new MK Morse carbide tip blade is working beautifully. All right, now that we got them all cut, we're ready to go over here to the lathe. We're gonna use the Precision Matthews manual lathe to get these done. Uh, we need to face them off on both sides. Bore it to 90 millimeter. We've got a loose tolerance to hit on that 90 mil. 
Uh, they don't want these things super tight. These all have to get welded in in place and they have to kind of get everything lined up, you know, with the pin and all. So we're going to shoot for about 10 thousandths clearance in these uh, weld bosses right there. And then uh, we'll clean the OD up, just needs to be cleaned up. We're not going to hit any kind of size or anything on that. Uh, chamfer one side, we're going to machine a quarter inch wide weld prep on the other side. They requested that and it's as easy as that. This one is probably going to end up giving us some fits just because you can see you got that old bandsaw cut in there. And I guarantee you there's uh, bandsaw teeth buried down in that cut. So we're probably going to wipe an insert or two trying to get that thing cut off there and get it faced. But we'll see. It may surprise us. But I'm going to do this one last because I'm anticipating it uh, tearing up an insert to get, that, to get that one done there. So we'll just put that one last last in order. So I've got some new inserts to try today. These, This is a pack of YG1 CNMG 431 inserts, which is the size that I like to run on my machines. I have a particular insert that I really like using that I've been running for, I don't know, probably more than 10 years. That's always reliable and always gives me really great chip control which is important to me when I'm doing manual work. I don't want chips popping way up in the air, flying all over the place. I like them to stay, uh, just curl right over off the tool, down into the chip pan. But I contacted my uh, local supplier that I usually buy from to get some of those inserts, and he suggested that I give these YG1 inserts a try. So we're gonna give them a shot and see how they are. So it is a CMG 431, as I said. YG3115, so that's gonna be the grade. I don't know, we'll give them a try and uh, see how they do. We'll load one up. We'll load one up in my facing tool and we'll put one in the boring bars there as well. 3115, never used them before. I've never used a YG1 turning and boring insert like this or CNMG insert. So we'll give them a try, see how they do. I'm looking for chip control. That's the main thing I'm looking for. I'm sure they're gonna work well but I just want good chip control, so we're gonna give these guys a try. All right, let's go get this finished up. Go ahead and load it up in the old three jaw here. We'll get one side faced, and then we'll go ahead and get the bore finished as well. Let's see how it's gonna run. Looks pretty good. We're gonna spin this at 380 RPM, which is gonna give a surface speed of about 650 uh, feet per minute on the outside diameter right here. I was just going off of the uh, range of the inserts. Uh, VC inch is 558 to 984 uh, surface feet a minute. Feed rates can range from 2,000 to 10,000 per revolution. All right. So I think, yep, yeah, we're just gonna roll with that. Let's see how it does. I got it set at uh, 9,000 per revolution feed. Touch off, I'm gonna hit the DRO up here. And let's just go in, uh, well, I hit the wrong one. Let me touch that again. Z, that's what we want. Let's move it in 50. It's a good old everyday face cut right there. Let's see how we do. Not looking good, not. That sounded a little, that sounded a little heavy. I'm looking for my pliers here so I can get rid of that chip. That did not, that did not sound good there. Let me check center. I may be, I may be high on this uh, insert right here. All right, I checked my uh, center height on the tip there against a, a live center and I am good. So let me do this again. That is definitely not the chip formation that I want, that I'm looking for. The finish is looking good, but it's not even breaking a chip. I'm just gonna let that finish get out of the way so it don't eat me up here. So remember, we've got questionable material as well. Joe was thinking that this is harder than it's supposed to be. That just doesn't look right at all. Not for mild steel. All right.
right, so finish is beautiful on that, but definitely not the chip control I'm looking for. Now, I don't know if that's the insert, the geometry at which we're facing it, or it's the material itself. So we're going to change it up and see if we can get some better results. Moved on to the bore. Uh, since we got our face done, we'll go ahead and go ahead and get this uh, bore finished up. Let's see if the tool does any better on that. Just trying to get it cleaned up and then we'll finish it. There's not a lot of material to take out of this. Seems to be doing better on that inside, chipping it better. So, I don't know, maybe the geometry at which I was facing that off is not ideal. So we'll try that on the, try something different on the next one. All right, I'm gonna set a Z right there, zero. Okay, won't take much more to clean that up. All right, where are we at right now? We want to take it to about 553 to give it that 10 clearance there. So we're right around 520. I'll, I'll measure it with the uh, telescope gauge and mic. I'm just, I just use calipers as a quick reference and get you within about five thou anyway. Made another <coughs> light pass through there to get a little bit closer. Now we'll go ahead and make a finish cut. I'm just going to use our Starrett telescoping gauge here. And our three to four micrometer to see where we're at. I'm going to shoot for about three point. What did I want? Three point five forty three plus ten five fifty three. So right now we're at twenty five thirty five six seven eight nine four thirty nine. All right. Yeah, we got one more pass to make through here. Look at that stringy chip. Gonna tear a finish up. Definitely not making the chip that I want to see. There's the finish ruin, rubbing. One thing that pisses off a machinist is, is chips ruining a good finish on the finish pass there. Man. Yep, absolutely ruined stringy chips. I'm not sure about them inserts, guys. And that right there is one reason why I'm not big on trying the newest insert because what I have has worked for years and it worked well. But let's see if we hit our size anyway. Yep, I got it at uh, five, three uh, point, I'm sorry, 3.5525. So we're at the place where we want to be on our size. So that one's finished. I'm going to hit that with some emery paper to clean up that scratch surface in there. Man, that pisses me off. Give that inside a chamfer, just using our brazed on tool for that. Well, good. It's good practice to break them corners any chance you get, just so you don't cut your hands in handling here. Just get rid of that sharp edge. All right, and then we'll move on to the, uh, the next one. Hopefully we're gonna get some better results out of our facing op. All right, back to this facing tool. I'm gonna take this YG insert out and we're gonna compare it to the insert that I always use. So this is an ISCAR. IC 8250TF. This is a used insert, but there's one corner here, that one right there that has not been used. So I'm gonna put it on that corner. And let's do another face op and see how the chips look using this insert. All right, we're ready to make a cut. So I'm just gonna use my uh, Edge Technology mag-backed carriage indicator right here. My favorite way to uh, control the Z depth or stop. 
whenever you're doing a facing or a boring op. I like being able to, as I'm looking down here at the tool and the cut, I'm looking down here and I can see this dial indicator in the zero, which to me is just more natural and more comfortable than staring up at a digital readout and not looking at your cut. So, we got it touched off. Let's dial in 50. This is going to be the same cut as last time. Oh. Nope. I steered you wrong there. I still had it in longitudinal instead of facing. All right, here we go. Well, it's uh, still stringing up. You know, that stringy material there is not working well. So I think I'm gonna ditch this, in, this, uh, this particular tool. We're just gonna use our C and MG. Uh, our, I'm sorry, which one is that one? I can't remember. DC LNR, uh, this tool right here. I think we're gonna go with that one. All right, got my plastic insert loaded up, plastic facing tool. Are we gonna get better results this time? I'm just cleaning up that previous face cut so we don't see a big line in there as we kit up on our heavy cut. That's better. I think we just need more feed on that. Yeah, that's doing much better. Still not the best chip, but it's but it's performing better. I'm going to be changing the insert out on the boring bar too because it's got uh, wear on the edge there where the chip actually rolls over and it rubs the corner of, of the insert. It's already got it worn off. So that's not working well. We're gonna go back with one of my classics. All right, back in with my one of my ISCAR. This is another used one that's still got three good corners on it. That's a pretty decent looking chip coming out of there. All right, that last pass looked great uh, with the chip formation there. This is our finish. Already got it moved over to size. Let's see how we do. A better looking chip. Had a little rubbing right there at the very end, but that's okay. You can see the finish looks pretty good. We'll give it a check with our micrometer and make sure we hit our target. Looking for 553. And there we have it, 5.53. So my DRO lined up good. I got X uh, set to a zero there to bring it to. All right, so that's better. My classic ISCAR insert is working better for me. And again, that's why I stick to that because it always works well no matter what I'm using it for. So maybe the YG inserts will work better in a different scenario, but for what I'm doing right here, it did not give me what I was looking for. All right, get the chamfers on here. Yep inside chamfer 
and then we will break the sharp off the outside corner. Make sure it didn't roll an edge on the inside. Yeah, that feels good. All right, we'll take this out. We're gonna put our number three in here. It's gonna have that uh, messed up uh, cut area that we gotta face through. So that, that one's gonna be fun. For this last one that I know we're gonna be getting into some uh, hard materials, I'm taking my good insert out that I know is gonna perform well. I'm putting another one in here. This one's actually a Walter insert. And I've got several of these and I haven't used a lot of them. So I'd rather sacrifice a couple tips on this one than my last couple of uh, good inserts that I, that I enjoy using. Got a little bit of material to take off this. I gotta change my feed direction here. Kick that feed up to 11 thousandths per rev. Give it a thickness check here. Let's see what I got. Oh yeah, we still got a hundred, over a hundred thousandths to face off of that. So let's see, it's trying to push it over there where the cut is. I'm gonna take a 50 thou cut and see what happens right here, okay? I think it's got the corner of the insert already. Looks like it's pushing a little harder against it. Stand back so that thing don't slice me. All right, I'm just gonna hit the foot brake here and see what we got going on. Oh yeah, it got the insert, which I expected. Yeah, look, it's just peeling off right there. Tell you what, I'm gonna just set a zero right here so we'll know where to come back to. And let's take a look at that. I wanna try to see if we can see some uh, teeth down in there, down in that cut. Oh, there we go. There may be some right there. It's really hard to tell. It's just all chewed up. And there might be some more over there. There's still another area that we haven't cleaned up. There may be some teeth in that little slot there. Maybe not. All right, let's, uh, let's take another cut and uh, see if we can get this cleaned up. I want to add an index that insert around so we do have a fresh corner in case I can clean it up here. All right, what'd we do? Still got just a little bit there, but I think we're, I think we're through the, the worst of it now. Should be good to go on uh, making an, another cleanup cut there to clean that face up. All right, let's see if we can get this face cleaned up. Oh 
All right, that's going to work. We're not going to worry about cleaning that up because it won't. It'll take it down below our two and one eighth width that that we're shooting for. There's a little bit right there. And Joe said that doesn't matter if there's some of that in there. It doesn't clean up. It's not a big deal. This is all going to get welded in. So that'll. So we'll just end up making this corner right here our weld prep, which will take all that out anyway. Now that I'm thinking about it, so we are good to go. There's one little line right there from the saw blade, but we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy bored. You guys already seen that, and I'll bring you back when we work on the other side. All right, we'll go ahead and get this other side faced out. I went ahead and bumped it up to 620 RPM so we can uh, hopefully get through this a little bit faster, a little bit better finish. 50 thousandths face cut. That looks normal, sounds normal, putting off a good chip. As of right now, I don't believe that there was any hard spots in the material. I may be wrong, using my best judgment here, but I don't see any hard spots. I don't know what was going on with their saw. But I know what a I know what a bandsaw blade does when it tears itself up and when it gets when it comes into material and breaks a tooth, as soon as one tooth breaks off of a bandsaw, it just wipes out all the bandsaw teeth behind it and then it sounds like total carnage at that point, which I know is what happened. But um, them saying that they changed the blade out and tried to cut it and it wouldn't cut, that's just mysterious to me. I don't I don't know what that is, but I'm not one to go try to tell somebody what they're doing wrong. So we got 30 thousandths to uh, take off of that. 10, 20, 30. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set a Z zero up here for our next two. Make our finish pass here. My classic is car insert is performing really good here. It's doing exactly what I was hoping it would. So I think that's just what I'm going to stick to. Let's see if we land it on two and one eighth. There and about. Close enough. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this uh, this side, this weld prep machined on there. And we're just going to make that about a quarter inch wide is what uh, Joe had said. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Ah, landed on my hands too. And what we do is just cut a little bit, measure it with the scale. Isn't critical at all, guys. And it's going to try to start chattering. So I don't know if I'm going to get through this, but the way I'm doing it. Yeah, usually these lathes can't handle them big old wide cuts like that. We're only about not even at 3 16 so we may just end up using the uh, compound to uh, cut that on there. That way I don't have all that chatter and that finish. So I think we'll just use our compound to finish out them quarter inch wide weld preps. This is the one with the bad bandsaw cut on it. You can see it's not really cleaning it up. I'm already at negative five thousandths.
probably just leave this one where it's at, just so we don't take it a bunch undersize. They can, they can weld that one to the inside, possibly, I don't know. I just know Joe always says, don't worry about that face, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, with a machinist, we always make it a big deal because it's personal to us. We want it to look as best we can, everything be on size and have a machine finish, not a bandsaw finish. But I know how he is. He doesn't want to make a big deal of that. So we're just going to, I think we're just going to leave that alone. Yeah, I lied to you. It really was bothering me. I took another 5,000. So this one's going to be 10 thou narrower than the other two. And I think we will leave it alone after this cut. That helped out. We'll just leave it like that, good enough. All right, so that finishes up the board and the faces. So we got two more ops left to do. We need to uh, clean the OD up and then machine that weld prep on one side. So I think what we'll do is uh, flip the jaws back around. We're gonna chuck the inside of it so that we can clean the, the entire OD. And then we'll also have the compound over here set on 45 so we can go ahead and machine that bevel on there. All right, we got our jaws flipped back around. And we'll go ahead and stick it in here and chuck the ID just like that. Bring it around here to the zero pinion. I think what we'll do is go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and get the OD of all three of them cleaned up and then we'll swap over to a boring bar and run and reach over here like this at our 45 and spin it backwards and uh, cut the bevel on there like that. All right, we just want to clean it up. Let's start with uh, 15 thou. All right, are we? Nope. <laughs> Going the wrong way with our feed direction, so let me reset this real quick. There we go, 15. Just taking a peek at it. That's the bandsaw cut, we're not worried about that. Uh, see a little bit there. How about we go in another five thou? That'll be 20 total. I'm gonna set my X to a zero right here. That's gonna work pretty good right there. Couple little spots didn't clean up, no big deal at all. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and let's get the OD of all three of them turned and then we'll worry about the, the chamfer and the bevel on the outside. Just make sure there's no chips throwing the face out. All right, so we're using our boring bar, compound set at 45 degrees. Uh, we'll, we'll run the spindle in reverse rotation here, like so. Let's give this guy a clean up. Just feeding this by hand. That's the chatter that we're cutting through that you hear. We'll get through that and we'll Make a little measurement on here. So much more civilized like that than trying to just uh, plunge a big wide face tool up in there. So we've got about another. Oh man. Well, there goes that. That was the nut that holds the hook on the end of my stair hook rule right there. I guess it was loose, I didn't know it. I heard it hit the chip pan back there. So you know that sucker's 
gone forever. That's a no man's land down there. I'm going to take a peek and see if I can find it first before I continue, but I doubt I'm going to find that screw. No, I did not find the screw, so I'm going to have to get a couple of those ordered. But I'm ready to get these guys finished. So I took another 30 thousandths here. All right. Now this is where DRO comes in really handy. I've got my X and Z set to a zero. So we back out there. We can come right back in to where we were cutting. And I'm just gonna do a simple, this is not critical in any way. I just wanna do a measurement here. Yeah, we still got about another 30 thousandths that we'll do. Bring our Z back into our zero. Ten, twenty, thirty. That should put us about where we want to. All right, where are we at now? That looks like a good quarter inch. Yeah. All right, that's a quarter inch weld prep. Close enough to what they're asking for there. All right, and um, I think the last stop I'll chamfer that other side because I don't want to. I don't want to remove my setup with the boring bar there. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy out, put another one in, and let's see this one's going to be. Clean up that bandsaw cut there on that side. Okay, take a hundred thousandths. Two hundred. Oh, I felt it hitting something there. That's that. It's one of those bandsaw cuts. I don't know if it was just the uh, tool marks or if it was actual teeth of the blades. Just getting my measurement there, making sure that I was on where I wanted to be. Come back into our Z. Oh yeah, there you go. Tore it up good right there. Definitely got into some teeth that time. So I know that cut for sure, man, they tore the blade up. It wiped out the corner of an insert there. I'm thinking I'm just gonna roll with it since it already got the edge and just see if we can uh, preserve it enough to get this, get those bandsaw teeth out of that material. Instead of ruining another corner of the insert, let's see if we can do that. Oh, looks like it snapped it right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. Let's see what we can do. This is not going to be good. This is not going to be pretty right here. Get underneath it. Not pretty at all. Wow. It's 
Still hitting them. Not quite there, I need to go a little bit further. I just about got it where it needs to be. And you can see, as I said, I was trying to just use the corner of that insert since it's already screwed up to finish this. They definitely got some uh, trash in here because of that, those bandsaw blade teeth. But I think we got it. So what I did was I swapped insert. I went to a wide radius uh, 433 insert, slowed it down. And I think I got underneath that that bad cut but what I noticed is where the bandsaw blade came in here and rubbed it made that spot a little bit harder I can tell it worked hard in just that one spot but I think we about got it this is a, a typical machinist trying to or not leaving well enough alone that's what I was getting at because I'm not done. I wasn't quite at the quarter inch depth. So I am trying to get it cleaned up to where it's at least quarter inch. There's the hole. Now we're cleaning it up. Okay. Not pretty, but we got her done. I don't know how long that thing was uh, chewing on that piece of tubing, but I can definitely tell that bandsaw blade just kind of work hardened. And I'm sure there's some of that bandsaw blade material buried in there as well. Anyway, that one's finished up. We got one more to do on our bevel. We're just about through with this job. Wipe that insert already. Hitting more of them. Uh, look at that stringy stuff, man. I got to get that out of there so it don't sling it around on me. All right, one more, one more pass here. This will bring us to our quarter inch. Last little lop here. We're just gonna chamfer this other side. Something about like that right there. We'll repeat that two more times. There we have it. All three of them are finished up now. All right, well, we have finished off our three weld-in pin bosses. I'm not gonna say that the prettiest job that we've ever done, but we, get, we went into this knowing that we were gonna have some material issues. And, uh, we, you know, so we got it done. But these bandsaw cuts, I knew it was gonna give us problems and it, and it and it did, you know, when you have those bandsaw teeth buried in the material like that, it's going to tear up a carbide insert or any tool that you go after. Doesn't matter if it's a turning tool or a milling tool, anything. That hard stuff is going to mess up your cutting tools. But we got them done. 
Got our weld prep on there, our quarter inch wide weld prep, uh, 10 thousandths over our 90 millimeter pin. That worked out good and they are ready to go. So this was that new YG insert. This is this particular one I used on the boring bar and that first pass through there, it already chipped that edge. There's a big old chip on that cutting edge there that broke off that insert. So I, this is definitely not the insert to use for this particular job right here, but I'm not gonna count this out as not being a good insert. This has more of a finishing look to it. I think it's a, uh, a finishing chip breaker. I'm sure that's what it is. It says UF on there. I know that F is gonna be for finishing and it is for steel. So I think this is probably gonna work better for probably more of like your high speed finishing, high speed uh, light cuts and finishing cuts and things like that. So this might be work a little better for those situations on the manual lathe or even in the CNC lathe. So I'm not gonna count them out yet, but for this manual work that I'm doing on, on the mild steel, you, you just can't beat the quality of that ISCAR insert the, and the, the reliability and the chip control is what I get out of those inserts and that's why I like using them. So anyway, there we go. This is finished up. We're gonna go drop this off at the welding shop. They're waiting to uh, get started on that, get these guys welded in and I'm sure they'll be happy to get these back. So I hope you enjoyed the video trying to share my uh, successes, my failures, and the kind of stuff that we run into. This is job shop work, man. This is machine shop work, fabrication work. Nothing's perfect. And we oftentimes run into uh, problems that we have to try to solve and uh, get it figured out and get the job done. And that's what we did right here. Our bandsaw blades worked really good. That new MK Morse uh, carbide tip blade worked perfect. And we were able to get it done. So hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you see you on the next project.